Evening everybody, Rich here, back for another video for the Diecast F1 review. Here today is the Ferrari SF70H from the 2017 Formula 1 World Championship. And in the car is Sebastian Vettel. Now 2017 is, of course we're still in 2017, the season's not over yet. But it's fair to say that it's one of Ferrari's better seasons uh, over the past few years. Definitely their best of the uh, hybrid era at least. Um, we've just come off... Or, about a week and a half after the Singapore Grand Prix, which is sort of Ferrari's lowest, uh, or lowest moment in history, I think, taking each other out on the first lap. But uh, hey ho, let bygones be bygones. And uh, of course, there are a few more races to still to go. I think there's was it five more races? Six? No, so about seven more races left. And uh, yeah, the, the championship is definitely uh, up for grabs still, although much more difficult. Now, of course, 2017 is the uh, return of the wide track cars, two metre wide cars, lower wings, a wider front wing and a more profiled, and the return of shark fins and other aerodynamic gubbins which are plastered all over the car. Uh, 2017 is uh, widely regarded as either a classic or a dud, but uh, it's open to interpretation. There have been a few dud races this year, uh, but there have also been some good ones as well. Sorry about the camera shaking, that is the... Uh, the tripod are going a bit funny. Um, but yeah, 2017, the SF78 started the season as, well, sort of the best car, really. It, it, it sort of uh, looked like it was going to be a, another Mercedes whitewash, but uh, after the first race, with Seb winning the first round, uh, opinions changed, and uh, although it wasn't an exciting race in Australia, uh, Ferrari seemed to have uh, got their act together and uh, pissed all over Mercedes Parade, which is sort of fair to say. And uh, it's good to see the frustrations from Mercedes uh, coming out, whereas Ferrari throughout 2016 was, uh, well, it was frustrating for them. But uh, hey, hey, there we go. And uh, it's good to see Ferrari back on form. Although it's only temporary, really. It's sort of, the, there's races where Ferrari win, then Mercedes win, the Ferrari It's sort of, there's no double uh, or back-to-back -back wins for Ferrari this year, I don't think. I think it's only uh, Lewis Hamilton who's managed to achieve that so far. But... Um, yeah, I think uh, Seb will still have a few more race wins uh, if things go his way. But uh, Kimi Räikkönen in the other car, I think, is sort of past it. Really, I think uh, it's it's, uh, it's I think it's, it's safe to say that Kimi should be pushed away really for Formula One. He's not uh, achieved very much at all. A pole position, yes, but uh, on race day, he's completely wiped by uh, Seb Vettel. But you know, in my opinion, anyway. Um, I mean, he's been at Ferrari four years now, and uh, or at least in the second part of his Ferrari career, he's been there four years and not achieved anything really. Apart from a few second places, a few podiums, but uh, nothing really just to uh, speak of. And 2017 sort of carries on in that way. But uh, yeah, the season is still young, and uh, it's uh, things can change. I mean, it's only my opinion, but there we go. Um, but yeah, it's not. I can't really say much about 2017 at the moment because, like I say, it's still ongoing and uh, the verdict will be open until the end of the season, whether it's a success or not, but uh, hey-ho, there we go. Now, before a review, review of the car, I just want to point out the, the changes that they made. Uh, you know, I've already mentioned them, the, the, the changes, and I think the 2017 cars are some of the best-looking cars that uh, have been produced for many years. I mean... Uh, when 2009 came along with the uh, the tall wing, the tall rear wing and narrow, tall narrow rear wing, wide front wing and slick tyres, I think the cars looked ridiculous at first, but they grew on me. But now as I look back, if we compare it to the 2016 car, if I just move uh, move that one back a bit and bring in the 16 car, which I've already reviewed, um, the 16 cars just look clumsy and over, sort of uh, out of balance, you know, because they're narrow and tall, whereas the newer cars are low and sleek and... Um, suspended a bit pissed there uh, but yeah the, uh, the the newer cars they really do look the part they're, they're really aggressive looking uh, the fat tires narrow uh, not narrow wings but uh, low wings and uh, it, really, it really just sort of a, a breath of fresh air for Formula 1 although they're still hybrid and sound like lawnmowers um, I'm not really that fussed about the sound it's more aesthetics and racing that really appeal to me the sound is just sort of a novelty really but we'll move that one out of the way but uh here we go. Now onto the car itself. Now this is a uh, a brand new release from Barago. It's just coming. Well, I'd say about a day or two ago it came in the post, and um, yeah, it's not too bad. There are issues with it, and I think uh, Barago has sort of gone down the lines of uh, sort of cutting back on their cost. Now I've compared the weight of this one to the previous car, and this car is really light. I don't know. 
it's hard to tell whether the bodywork is plastic or metal. I mean, it's it sounds metal. It, it's cold like metal, but I'm not sure if it is metal or a sort of resiny plastic. Cause it is, it, the car is so light. I mean, it's a big car. It's a very big car, but it just feels really light. And um, I really don't know what to, what to say about that. It's just really weird. But um, yeah, I think that's one of the downfalls for it just being really light. You expect it to be really heavy, but. No, never mind. Now I will point out one of the issues with this car is the front suspension. Like with the previous Barago models of this line, the front suspension is a bit iffy. As you can see, the uh, I'm not really doing a good angle. If I just turn the camera up. You can see the front wheels are a bit pissed. As you can see, the uh, the steering arm is a bit too long and loose. But so when it's sat on the ground, I mean, you can position the steering wheel like. But it's just when it's floating, it's the suspension is really loose and. It's. Uh, I think the steering arm is just too flexible, which is causing that. But when it's flat on the floor, it's fine. But uh, it's just one of those issues. But overall, though, it's a fantastic-looking car. I mean, 2017 cars, like I said, are some of the best we've seen for a long time. Now, if we have a quick fly around the car, we just get the camera up. <laughs> now, I will apologise for the light. It's not natural light because, of course, it's September and it's the UK and it's raining outside. So um, that's the issue with the light. But if we look down the back. You see the really wide floor, you've got the really wide rear tyres there. You've got the really fat slicks. You've got the rear wing, which has the uh, indenting end plates. You can't really see it from this angle, but you've got the rear wing end plates which fold in. You've got the, uh, the uh, monkey seat there, you've got the, the uh, exhaust pipe. Carbon detailing on the suspension, which is nice, although that's more moulding rather than decals. And uh, once again, it looks pretty good. You've got the DRS. Uh, the RS thing there, which is just sort of a peg. Got the uh, the double swan heads, if you like, the swan necks supports for the rear wing. Got the centre wing on the shark fin. Now I know people are uh, critical of shark fins. Now I think shark fins look alright if they're sculpted, which is this one is. It's you know it's got a bit sort of shark fin esque to it. Um, I quite like shark fins. If it's sort of the one like Williams has got or Force India have got, where it's basically just a barn door sort of stuck to the back, it's not that pretty, but if they put a bit more detail into it and make it a bit more sculpted, it'll look fine. I mean, I'm, I quite like shark fins and uh, they sort of just make the car give a bit more identity, but that's just my opinion. And look at the rear wing, because the rear wing is sloped back, and of course the rear wing is in the proper position now, where it should be in the previous sort of 12 years, the rear wing has been sat, the front of the rear wing has been sat directly above the axle line, whereas now it's been pushed back to where it used to be. And of course the rear wing is now sloped or angled back. Got a shark fin there with the T-wing on the top, which is uh, sort of an early season T-wing really, it's nothing to it, it's just a, a single piece of plastic really, there's no uh, double element or anything like that, so that's sort of early season. There's also there's no driver name either on it, uh, on the uh, shark fin. Now I have, do Ferrari have the, sh the names of the drives? I haven't actually, uh, well I have looked, but I don't think they, they I think they do, don't they? I think all teams have to have the driver's name on the uh, shark fin now. So it's obvious this car is an early season spec. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. And look at the uh, side pods. These side pods are weird on this car, but it just shows ingenuity, really, because the uh, the way the side pods, the intakes, uh, you've got the intakes on the top there, which I imagine are for the turbo, and you've got the intakes underneath, which are probably for the engine. So, sort of a double intake, very nicely made. And there's no real big panel gaps either, unlike uh, previous models, so they're quite nicely fitted. And it's just weird how it looks. But uh, it's quite quite, quite a nice design. But like I said, the paintwork is not being shown uh, in the full detail because of the light above. But uh, hey, here we go, so we'll have a quick look down the, the uh, nose. The much longer nose on these cars now because of the, uh, the, scu the, uh, the uh, uh, sculpting of the front wing. Of course, it's now angled back and angled profile of the front wing. Which means the car needs a, needs, a, needs a longer nose, that's what I was trying to say. So you've got all the uh, detailing on the top of the chassis, which is all moulded in the same material. Well, it's either metal or plastic, I'm not sure. Um, I, think, I think it is metal, it's just much lighter. See, I think that's metal. It just, just feels really light, the car does. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. But uh, the suspension, of course, the, the, the push rod is doubled up as the steering rod, which is a bit too flexible for this. As you can see, the suspension is a bit flaily. You know, it's not a big issue. If it's on display, it's not a problem. And you've got the front wing, which is the a really big front wing now because of the uh, the width of it and the angle. Once again, moulded in one pla one piece, 
for the uh, the elements here. You can see there's no gaps between them, but that's not a big issue. Uh, you've got the bigger side, uh, bigger um, not side pods, the um, bigger uh, barge boards moulded into the floor, quite well held on there, so they're not going to not going to break off. They're moulded into the floor. Got the barge, uh, another panel there on the side. You've got a really big floor. Of course, the, the wider floor makes the um, the narrowness of the chassis or the narrowness of the bodywork here sort of stand out a bit more. If we go back to the top again and look straight down, get the camera zoomed out. So you can see the floor of the car is much wider. But it really makes the um, the bodywork of the car much narrower and makes it seem more extreme. If you compare it to the previous year, so you can see there the, the car, the body, the, well, the floor is much narrower. And actually, it's not much difference really. I think it's the, I think it's the rear tyres that sort of exaggerate it a bit. But uh, the rear bodywork, um, yeah, I think it's the floor and the tyres that sort of give the illusion of making making the car look really narrow. But uh, I really do like this car. And, uh, any angle really, as long as the wheels are pointing the right way, it's not a problem. Really stunning car, and uh, definitely one for the collectors. I suspect, um, I think it was, it looks smart. They'll probably have their version of the car available soon, but uh, yeah, it's not, not too bad. If we just uh, plonk the camera there and have a look at the floor of the car underneath, I lift it up, much bigger floor on this car. If we look from the front wing, detail on the bottom, the uh, carbon effect. Under the nose, got all the uh, gubbins attached to the floor underneath. You've got the reflective plastic from the previous model, so it's still carbon texture, but it's reflective. You've got the SF70H Barago there. And I uh, can't see that there, but it's 118 it says there. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Once again, the tyres are pissed, but don't mind. And it's a very big floor in this car. Like I said, it's a big car overall. Big tyres. Really do like it. Beautiful. But that, yeah, it's, it's the it's the colour of the, the car though, which is sort of letting it. It's not the colour. You know, the paint works fine. It's just the light in here is just making it look shit. But uh, the paint application is fine. The only paint application issue I see is on the rear wing. The rear wing end plates, as you can see, the um, the paintwork is a bit mm, fuzzled there. It's not uh, applied all that well, it's not straight, but you know, not a big issue, I suppose. You can touch it up a bit if you want to. Uh, I really love the way the uh, the bodywork slopes down there around uh, below the uh, white uh, shark fin. It's just a really sleek looking machine. And uh, not too bad. If we just get a look inside the cockpit as well, and just turn the car that way and have a zoom on in, you'll see a bit more sculpting to the uh, steering wheel this time, a bit more detailing. And uh, it looks a lot better than the previous two attempts, and they don't look too bad. Just notice the T cam is a little bit uh, a funny angle. I think that's sort of an application issue rather than a uh, broken. I think it's just where it's not been put on properly. Yeah, it's bent, so I might have to break that off and uh, glue it back on straight, or it might. Uh, it. You know, I don't want to bend it too much. It might probably ruin it. But uh, anyhow, it's not too bad. There are, there are issues, like I said, the front tyres are the biggest issue, but if you're going to display it, it's not going to be a problem. Um, but yeah, price-wise for this car, as it's a new release, um, prices are at their full. And uh, I'm just looking at the, the front profile of this car, you can see the undercut of the side pods there, how much... You, know, you can probably park a bus under there, I mean, the way the side pods just sculpt inwards is really amazing there, you can really get the detailing there. Fantastic. Love it. But yeah. I really do like this car, but uh, like I say, it's a new release from Barago, and the prices are probably at their highest as they'll ever be. Um, I'm surprised by Barago though, because I thought they'd release it at the end of the season. I thought they'd put the car back till the end of the season to see if uh, Vettel won the championship or not, you know, because then they could bump the price up if they wanted to. Um, but um, obviously they didn't, so uh, they've released it in September, which is fine. And I paid fifty-three pounds all in for this thing. That's postage as well. Now I bought this from, now don't uh, take this as gospel, I bought it from Little Belide, I think that's the, how you pronounce it, it's a French uh, French site um, which distributes, well, which uh, supplies models, and I found them the cheapest. Um, if you buy this in the UK, if you buy this um, in the UK on GP Legends, or Diecast Legends, whatever they call themselves, you're going to pay 70 for the car. £70 for the car and probably about another fiver for PMP, so that's £75 all in. I went to fr to Little Belide and paid £53 all in for it, so it's €49, Euros, which is 
about 40, 44 pounds and then a few quid PMP which is fine and it's, it comes to 53 pounds all in so I'm, I'm happy with that I mean if you buy it in the UK you're going to pay at least another quarter, another half on top of that so you know it's ridiculous you know, why, should, why should we have to pay more but I suppose being the only distributor in the country you're going to have that problem but uh, yeah I bought it from a little belied CK models have not got theirs in yet but uh, I assure you they will have theirs in and they're bound to be cheaper than uh, Diecast Legends um, I bought this off a little belied because I wanted it now so uh, that's that's my reason so I've got it now and I've got it and I'm happy um, but yeah there's bound to be other uh, distributors as well eBay haven't got oh, hang on yeah eBay have got them in I think eBay little, little belied on eBay have got them anyway so you can buy them there but I think they're a bit dearer on eBay um, but yeah it's uh, the price wise is fine the prices are going to come down I mean the twin the, the 2016 car is now at 30 euros um, which is about 27 28 pounds no less than that about 25 pounds now which is fine um, so the, the 2017 car the price is going to come down uh, as soon as the new year starts really so which is uh, not a problem if, you, if you're a collector like me you're going to pick these up and uh, this car looks fantastic and I really do uh, uh, recommend it now it looks smart we'll probably do their version of it and you're probably going to pay probably 150 200 pounds for it that's probably about 150 about 140 euros 240 euros for it um, and really the only difference really uh, the only difference are going to be scrub tyres and a working DRS really is the only difference I think um, but yeah that's uh, that's what you're going to pay though if you're gullible enough to pay the money uh, of that if you're an avid Ferrari fan I'd recommend the Barago but uh, if, you're going to, if you've got the money then by all means go for the look smart um, it's just a shame that uh, the way prices have gone up over the years but never mind it's a motorbike gush gone by um, and uh, I was expecting as well a massive price rise this year I think the prices have gone up a little bit because the cars are bigger because you've got the bigger tyres, you've got the bigger bodywork and all that I was expecting the prices to go up but they've not gone up a huge amount um, of course the Mini Chance versions have gone up quite a, well, gone up a few pounds the Barago one hasn't gone up at all maybe that's why it's so light to be honest because I mean, the car, like I said, the car does feel really light but to comparing it to the 2016 car, I think it's about the same weight. It's just sort of the weight's been moved about a bit more. So, you know, it's just my my uh, opinion anyway. But yeah, I would recommend this car, um, whether you're a Raikkonen or a Vettel fan, and uh, yeah, pick it up. I mean, the, the prices are going to go down. It'll probably be about uh, 30 euros this time next year, and uh, it's the last Formula One Ferrari car that won't have the halo. So I'm I'm a bit. 50-50 on the halo, I mean we probably do need it, but I think indie cars need the halo more than um, the Formula 1 does. Uh, the halo, if it's done properly, you know, if it's painted the colour of the car, it may be a bit more invisible, you know, it won't be as obvious. The only time you probably notice it more is when you're using the T-cam on board, the onboard camera. Um, so, you know, I'm sort of 50-50 on the, um, <clears throat> on the uh, halo, but we'll see. And uh, as they come in, I expect the prices will go up about 50% on the models because of the halo, but we'll, <laughs> we'll wait and see on that. Um, but yeah, I would recommend this car, definitely. It's uh, it's out there now, so they've got a 2017 car out there. Uh, Mini Champs and Look Smart and Spark will probably bring theirs out, um, either at, right at the end of the year or the beginning of next year. Um, hopefully, Barago will do their Mercedes as well. I mean, I've, I reviewed recently the 2016 Mercedes by Barago. And uh, that's a, a nice little model as well. Hopefully they will do their 2017 Mercedes as well, because that's a stunning looking car as well. So I'm looking forward to that, if they do. And I think I read somewhere on, I think it was on the, the Little Belide website where I bought this thing, they're doing a 2017 Red Bull as well, Barago. So um, I'll look into that one. I haven't, I haven't seen no more sources on that one, but uh, hopefully uh, Barago will do the 2017 Red Bull and we'll be able to uh, enjoy that one as well. But we'll wait and see. But uh, anyway, that's my opinion of the car. We'll just put the car to one side for a minute and just look at the box. The box is the same as the uh, previous two models, so it's the same design. It's actually the same. The only thing different, of course, is the logo on there, the, seven, the uh, SF70H. And uh, quick look around the side. We've got uh, Seb on the side there. Can't see him very well. We've got Seb there. 
around the back we've got the same three model cars on the back and on the other side we have, oh, we've got Kimi Raikkonen on this side so I've not noticed that one so we've got both drivers on the car or on the box sorry and uh, yeah, that's that right I'll that out of the way the inside card which goes around the base is here we are. and we've got both drivers on the uh, on the card so you can see both Seb and uh, Kimi there and they're both signatures the card itself is just basically that Pardon me, and the base is the same as the previous two as well. If I just get that, it's the same, same plastic with the uh, SF70H there, so it's the same as the previous two years as well. So that's that. I'm going to pick that up and uh, find where the, oh, the screw put that on there. So we bring the car back and uh, finish off there. So yeah, definitely one for the collection if you're a Formula One collector or a Ferrari fan, whichever you like. I mean, the car does look fantastic, even though it's a cheaper representation of what uh, the bigger manufacturers would do. But uh, if you're on a budget like me, then uh, this is the one for you. But if, uh, like I say, if you're gullible enough to pay two, three hundred pounds for the same car with a few extra gimmicks on it, like uh, a working DRS and scrub tyres, then you know, by all means, up to you. Um, but yeah, I would recommend this car, and uh, yeah, it looks fantastic. So. Um, that's really more, all I've got to say for it. That ha it has its issues, you know. Like I say, it's very light and the suspension's a bit iffy, but you know what you're going to do. But uh, yeah, I'd recommend it. So that's uh, that's the Ferrari SF70H, and that's really all I've got to say about it. And uh, actually, I'm going to now put it on my uh, in my display cabinet back with the uh, the other ones and uh, admire it for years to come. So. This is Rich, signing off, logging off and disappearing, and I shall return with another review. Don't know when, but we'll see. But anyway, bye for now.